The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, Lord Basil Chapman. On this Monday, the 24th of July, we're looking at the Dow actually extending the gains, making a new recovery high today. Uh, it's at 35,360, and uh, the last high was 35,372 just three sessions ago, and here it is, having touched 35,392. So the 35,390s, on a very short-term basis, I always expect that the 90s, just before you get to the 100 mark, is almost always, there's some kind of uh, resistance. If you smash through, look at this, 34,588 on the 16th of June pulls back, goes back, and it goes just a little bit under that, and then it pulls back, and now it's had a huge move up. A uh, very good action. Uh, the weekly chart leg E just extended. That means you can't get a peak E until not this Friday, but the following Friday. However, this is what I'm looking at. I believe, and I spoke about this last week, that we're coming into a potential digestive phase. It's a rotational phase. I just want you to check what I'm saying here because I might forget. The XLF, mm mm. Having not a bad day today, up 16, uh, 16 cents at 35.41, not above Friday's high, but it's holding quite well. And the KRE, which is the regional ETF, bank ETF, um, also not a bad day, up 75 cents at 47.13. So my thinking here and what I see to subscribe to my opening call, one of the reasons why we've uh, started to build up another cash position ready to put money to work over the next few weeks is that I think we're going to be seeing some kind of a rotational correction. Mm. If that's the case, at this particular point, let me just go back here. The Dow is showing uh, senior strength. It's really now back to being a leader in many ways, even though it's just the Dow 30. The mix of it is really quite good. At this particular point, uh, we're looking at uh, up 139 with the nine period, well, the price is way above the nine period, which is, has supported 34914 The 14 is below it at 34719 So that green nine is still very, very strong. The MACD is still a very strong, although the histogram is just starting to shrink a little bit, but the price is still excellent. Stochastic's at 92%. That's good. On balance volume. I have to say the unbalanced volume, if I do this, let me just show you this. Look at this left side chart as I squeeze it, make it smaller. Look how that nine period moving average goes to overboard. But I like to do it as, as conservative as possible. And what we're looking at is if I put it into the longer context, because this is just a price. Uh, it's, a, it's a continuous contract where the price on a closing basis, in, in this case, a daily basis, if it closes up, Volume gets added. If it closes down, volume gets subtracted. Uh, on balance volume, therefore, is a single price point, although it's made up of uh, different aspects, but it shows up as a single price point. And I have to consider that in the daily, it is still a little bit, uh, it isn't overbought yet. But the weekly chart is overbought and the monthly chart is becoming overbought. Can stay that way for a while, but this is where I, it's the only indicator that I use on, as a, as overbought, or oversold, and so far it's in the longer term, starting to get a little bit toppy. Okay, <clears throat> we'll go to the S and P. Look at parameters that I want to follow. S and P is now up eight at eighty uh, forty five forty five. I think this is slowing down the upward recovery uh, to towards the all time high of uh, forty eight eighteen. Uh, the last high was 45.78. So 40, you know, 40 or 50 points in the S&P at any time, 500 points in the Dow, it's really not a big deal. And that just says to me, leg C in the monthly chart with all the technicals positive, and of course we've got a, a week to go before it wraps up. But so far, this is really, really impressive action. I think we will make a new all-time high in the S&P in 2023, maybe in the summer. Look at the uh, QQQ. It's led the pack. 
at 387.13. It got to within 15, 16 points of the all-time high. I mean, really, when you think about what we went through over a period of a year, um, what we are looking at is within the context of the monthly chart, it's only a gray leg A, but I have to consider that I, it's really got the characteristics of a buy mode because the MACD strong stochastics at 77% with, with another week to go, getting close to the 80%, but I suspect that there's a good chance of some of that it gets to over 80%. And uh, the 9 is over the 14. So the price in the month is really good for a single leg A up from the October low of 254.36. But the daily says, uh-oh, we've got a little bit of a breather coming up. And the weekly says, very good action up until now. But it is a peak D and at a peak D in the Chapman Way methodology, you've got to be ready for anything. And that's what we're looking at. So in this case, 368 is really the area to look at. We close under that in the next uh, week. Uh, that says the consolidation could be underway and that it could continue a little longer. IWM, which I said is holding a little bit better, is up 22 cents at 194.72. But you've had three candles since the doji candle high of 197.66, recovery high that is. And the weekly chart is really good, uh, but it's beginning, price is beginning to struggle a little bit, even though it's and is going towards the... Uh, the resistance of the 198 high back in, uh, earlier this year, I think it was about March, February, March. And the weekly chart says within the second cup formation, a smaller cup formation, we could be getting close to some kind of resistance. And the monthly chart says, whoa, a lot of work to get to the 208, 212 area, which says, whew, now we can breathe because we've got upside recovery to go. Meantime, back at the ranch, let's just do this to semiconductors. If they come back a little bit, they're down a penny. At 153.78, just kind of struggling here, not doing very much. Weekly chart is at a, a leg D. No new high above 160.79 says, uh-oh. That means we've made a peak D near term. Uh, top in the day, the weekly chart is leg D, and that'll become a peak D. We're watching this closely, but you know what? It made an all-time high. The semiconductor index made an all-time high after everything that's gone on. COVID, the works, everything. All right, now let's go on to the uh, good gold. Gold is pulling back <clears throat> down about three at uh, 1963. Excuse me. Just need to lubricate the vocals. Uh, silver, is, uh, this is a, a peak D. Uh, silver is trading up, uh, down 27 ticks at 2458. Also at a peak D with a bit of a pullback here. Uh, they're holding okay. They're not doing great. They did great. Silver did really nicely up until they're ready to the 25s. Uh, now 24.57, just digesting the gains. High-grade copper. High-grade copper is just stuck in, meandering in the middle of a lower range. Wood, which I always do together with because it's global. Copper's global. Uh, iShares, Global Timber Forestry ETF, Global, of course, uh, pulling back from a peak D under the 200 period moving average in the daily. Uh, weekly is in a kind of a sideways move, but it's had a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. But I have to mention the Chap Wave inverted falling exclamation. I'm not dismissing that. And that says if there is a pullback under. Right. Oops. Eight in August, we could go down quite a bit, and I'm watching it closely. I'll be back. Guys, up on you, fifty five. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, we're back, and we're looking at the Dow holding really quite well, up 166, S&P's up 1674. And I just wanted to go through a couple of things. So I didn't finish. I had some questions on Friday, which I didn't get to. Uh, but um, FXI, what is it doing? I think it's just sideways in the lower range. iShares China large cap ETF just kind of stuck for now. Has a lot of resistance at 28.67. That's the 200 period moving average. It got repelled at exactly that line uh, a couple of times over the last three weeks. Uh, 27.55 down seven cents. You can see this weekly chart, lowercase h, goes to lowercase m. It did succeed in going above it, but now it started yet another one. So it's just kind of stuck for now. If it can trade in the in August, it can, if in, I'd have to look at the weekly chart. If any week in August it closes over 29.55. That's going to be really good action. 255 is only two points from here. You know, this is a financial stock e-commerce. Uh, sorry, financial stock. It's an iShare China large cap ETF. I, I was mixing up with the stock I'm going to look at next. Uh, but FXI stuck in a range. A break under 26 says, oh, you got to be really careful. It could be going down to test the 25.50 low that was made back in beginning of June. So this is what we're looking at. Another one was MUX. This is uh, <clears throat> McEwen Mining. And uh, did I spell that incorrectly? And, uh, yeah, no, McEwen Mining. <clears throat> Very nice move from the low that was made at about 6.58. Let me just check the exact price. Six, oh, that's right, 666, I remember now. 666, back in the beginning of July. And where does it go to? It spikes all the way to the nines, goes to nine point. Doji candle on the, 17th, on the 19th of July. It goes to 9.18. Wow, that is a very nice pop to the upside. And that's leg 
there's your A. I typed that in way back when we were in the 750 area. Uh, that goes to a B. Yeah, this is still acting very well. So uh, McEwen Mining, MUX is a symbol, doing well. I think that the support is at the 650, uh, 850 to um, 830 area. And if it goes under 820, that's a problem. It's like a single leg A to the upside that fails. But in this case, you've got almost a cup formation in the weekly chart and says if it's able to trade, I don't mean just pop, but it needs to trade, hold, uh, hold two days, trading in the 947 or higher area, then that high that was made back at um, – on the week of the 14th of April at $10, round number $10. 10, round number high. That becomes a target. So this is a gray A in the weekly chart for now. Gray A. It's made a peak B in the monthly chart, acting very well. Normally, I look at this pattern and I say, okay, wait a minute. I, I actually love this kind of pattern. You've got a narrow trading range to the downside in a channel. And then it breaks to the upside, but this stalled over here with these little doji candles. And therefore, uh, this particular move has a different connotation altogether. It's a very strong move. The MACD in the weekly chart, just about to cross positive. The stochastic is mm, okay at 45%, but price is the arbiter of the trend. So far, the price is only very well. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm calling it a peak B. And I'm calling it a buy mode in the daily chart because. The stochastic's very good at 92%. Okay, with that said, i uh, got another question. Let me just check here. Okay, there, there, there. Oh, um, could I look? Where was it? Oh, Apple. All right. Apple. <laughs> Apple is trading. I've been talking about this for a couple of days now. I was going to a leg D. 194.48 was the peak C high as we went into July. Then 198.29. Four sessions ago, it's just stalling here. Stalling is okay, but this is Apple, which doesn't usually stall for very, very long. So I'm suggesting to you, based on the weekly chart, the daily chart, the weekly chart, so the daily nine is still over the 14. It's going to take a big smash to the downside under 185 to get that nine period move, moving average to actually get close to crossing negative. But that weekly chart is still very strong. So when I look at the bigger picture, the weekly charts have all been very, very good. And within that context, it's the daily. Remember, the daily is the little, well, 120-minute chart. But I like to think the daily is the speed road that turns around. And that's the only way you can impact a weekly chart if the daily chart makes a big change in direction. So, so far... Apple's holding very well. It's up $1.45 at one ninety three thirty eight. When does it? Uh, um, so Apple, A AMZ, Amazon. That's at peak F, and it's pulling back. It's it's below the up channel support line. The nine is so close to crossing negative. I think Amazon's have a bit of a digestive phase over the next. Um, three to seven sessions, maybe a little more. We'll see what happens here. What's the other one? Microsoft, I was asked about. Microsoft, this is like a single leg, A to the upside. Remember, I called it more like a rogue wave than a right shoulder failure, even though it was moving to the upside. Uh, but the nine is still holding well above the 14, and I, I treat that as a benchmark. That is really important, and the weekly chart is still strong. So all, all in all, I want to just say, summarily that I cannot even though we have taken some short positions in some some sectors I it's a process and I, I said to subscribers it's a process and it's going to be led by certain characteristics and until those characteristics really start to show signs of deterioration I think the upside is more limited but it could also mean that we've got a sideways consolidation so we, we've we got our tight stops in place, and that's the way I'm looking at Nike mentioned in the den. Nike uh, is a Dow stock. It's trading down 29 cents at 108.78. Yeah, this H pattern can go to an M pattern, lowercase h to a low, second arch goes to a lowercase m. So a peak A, peak B, peak C, a leg C. Yeah, I think this is just stuck for now. There are a couple of these stocks in the Dow that are telling me that um, some are about to break down and others could be on the verge. Look at Triple M. Uh, when I went through the charts over the weekend, 
uh, Triple M has had a, a very nice move, but it's just a nice move. When you look at the monthly chart, wow, so much has to happen for it to repair the, the tremendous damage, going from over 200 uh, down to under 100, trading right now at 104.19, down 14 cents. Uh, P, a leg D in the daily. Uh, I'm going to just get this right. There it is. Leg D in the daily, still within this arch that goes to it. Yeah, look at this. So we've got a bunch of patterns. One is you've got this. Oh, I didn't need to move that. Let me just grab this little guy here. Yeah, you've got this very big rectangle formation. That's number one. Number two is you've got two cup formations. You've got one cup here and one cup here. Smaller cups, like a huge cup and ladle. Okay, sorry, cup and handle. Um, so until Triple M, this is a multinational conglomerate, abrasives, adhesives, uh, sticky notes, um, until it's trading in the, I, I would normally say, just above the resistance in the 180. No, I would say if as soon as tri Triple M starts to trade in the 180, it's a different chart altogether. And until then, it's got six points to go, kind of stuff. I'll be back. Dow's up 140 PS and he's up 16, holding very well considering this should be a digestive heat. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. 
I uh, yeah, mean, just let me do this live right now. So this is the E Mini One Minute Chart. Went. It, uh, this is fascinating because look what happened. We went to you know, chapter we're always looking for. Let me see if I can find it right here. We're always looking for a rally. Identify a low bar, see if the low bar starts higher peaks, and then see if it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode. That would imply at least four higher peaks to come. Uh, peak A, one penny above that, starts leg B, becomes a peak B when it turns around at the top there. And then one penny above B, starts leg C until it becomes a peak C, etc. It can go E, F, G even. But at D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. So here we go. <clears throat> Uh, peak D in the one-minute chart at about 8.35 this morning, pulls back, flips positive again, goes to peak D, holds very nicely, and then it goes to an E and then pulls back a little deeper. And then it starts a brand new, and I use this as a phantom peak, and it goes to another D right there at 45.86.50, and that was at about 9.45. Pulls back very sharply at that peak D. Does an arch formation. I didn't even have a chance to type in the uh, left side, right side price time match, but it got there a little early, broke below it, went down to a low of uh, 40, uh, 45, 68, 75, and then saw another peak, A, B, C, flips to positive and continues high to a D, and now it's gone to an E, and I drew in what I consider the left side, right side price match to this particular bar right here, this Chapman Wave Roman candle. And we've just missed in the time frame that I gave it, which was to 10.32. Yeah, we are at 10.32 exactly as we speak. We just missed by about a point and a half or so, making that recovery high of 40, uh, 54, ah, 54, 45.86.50. It's still time. We could still do it, but it's working very hard. And this is what we call an Eiffel Tower right here. In the 10-minute chart, Eiffel Tower straight up. Straight, how funny Eiffel Tower. Sun was uh, right in Paris uh, uh, last night for a very brief stopover. Uh, uh, and this is the Eiffel Tower where the price goes straight up and then straight down with an A failure. Well, in this case, it didn't take out the left side low of the doji candle at 8.20 at 45.68.25. Instead, it went all the way up. Pulls back sharply, holds that support, and now has had a good bounce. And, uh, yeah, these are Fibonacci numbers. At this point, I'm taking them away because they've met their purpose. There's something else going on. And I'm watching to see what happens next. Uh, that was a PK failure, but a very good rally towards the upside. Didn't get, a, get, get taken out, and now it's starting to fail at this peak E right here. There's your arch formation that becomes an M formation at the top, got to be careful. And as I say, we've taken some position, a little aggressive, I'm not usually this aggressive, um, except in the Dow over the decades and decades, those of you who know my work forever, know that when we get to a peak D under certain conditions in the, in the Dow or a leg D, I might start a position um, that's based on that, but I, I can also do it based on other things. So in this particular point, uh, this particular situ situation, with the nine period moving average in the dailies still quite strong, I'm saying it has to be a process. There is no, oh, I needed to show this. There is no dark news cloud cover, and that's this chart here that I've been showing for a long time. And I said last week, look at this. We're now very nicely above the resistance of uh, 34,712, I believe it was, back in December. Yep, there it is, December the 13th. <clears throat> We've gone not just three or four days above that. This is one, two, three, four, five sessions. So that says there's tremendous support. The green nine period moving average is a very good sign. But everything else about this says to me, at this particular stage, there's a chance that we're starting to see upside resistance, a, a kind of a cap on the market, not too far above from where we are. Um, but each one is now in a very uh, different area. Each index is doing something a little different in the daily charts. So let me just get out of this right here. I wanted to go to, so we have Melly in the background here. Melly is Mercado Libre. 
uh, e-commerce Latin America. I had a question about if someone wanted to say they've got a position, they want to start, start building a, a longer term position. And I'm just going to say that I understand why you would want to do it. There are some things on the Latin Americas that have worked, are being working quite well. But I would also say, put this into the category of financials. So in that particular sector, this chart pattern is not unlike some of the others that we've seen uh, in the American bank sector. So if you're looking at this to start adding to the position, I would want it to be so that it is close to where in a very short term from the price you enter at, you will see a gain. And that gain says you can now make a decent cushion because I wouldn't be adding anything more than something now um, if in this this week, this time frame, um, before I put anything else. I wouldn't add yet another. So if you're going to add, I would just say hold off a little bit. I know the difference is trading at MELI is, is uh, Mercado Libre, uh, 1,195 down 25 right now. Uh, the 9 is over the 14. It's up above the the 11.43, 200-period exponential moving average. Weekly chart has this falling X formation. But I don't see anything yet in the weekly to say that it is ready to turn strongly to the upside. It'll have to come from the daily, and the daily just kind of stalled for three sessions. So here's what I'm going to say to you. I know that you also use options. If you're going to use options at all, I would say looking at a September, uh, I would go in the money, a September 11.95. So that means you're paying a little bit of a premium um, in terms of the, uh, the time sequence. But you're not paying very much premium in terms of the price because it's at 11.95 and you are buying at 11.95. It's not like you're buying um, a, a, a 1,200 which means you're giving up 15 points right away. So I would say that's one way to do it. Just start a little position. But if you're looking to actually add, I can't tell you right now to add. Probably if it goes to 12.48, I'd say, oh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Nice Move. But it just seems to be kind of stuck here. So I would do this. I know that you have patience and you are looking it out and you've probably done your homework to say, do you think it's going higher? If that's the case, Split your entry position of a of an add-on right now, and you could go one part of it in at eleven ninety-five. If you're asking my own opinion, I would wait to see how it holds on the next pullback, holds the eleven forty-three two hundred period moving average. It looks like it could make an arch formation. Uh, the the on balance volume is extremely overbought. MACD is good. Stochastics is seventy-nine percent. That's not bad. So that's why I'm saying, yeah, I'm not gonna. If you want to start. Just you can start a little bit here and make that a split position, and then let's see what it does. Maybe 30 or 40 points here. Our Dow's up 154, SPs are 571. And this is the March goes to M pattern. Yep, there it is. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, questions came in about VLO. VLO is Valero Energy. Is trading right now up uh, 235 at 125.34. Has a couple of gaps up and a couple of really good sessions to the upside. Uh, this is a leg E way above the 119 200 period exponential moving average price. It's 125. It hit 126.85. <clears throat> I like it very much, but it's a work on, in progress. Now there's quick A, B, C, D in the daily, in the weekly charts. The last one was a peak D right there at the 150.39 high week the 27th of uh, January of this year. Drops all the way down to the 104 area, yeah, 10418 on the week of the 5th of May. So this is a really good rally, uh, 200%. It's about 16-17%. Uh, and now what we're looking at is, <clears throat> is this telling us in the monthly chart that crude oil is going to go higher and that the oil and gas exploration companies are going to do very, very well in this period? Maybe we do have a bit of a consolidation. Maybe the Fed is looking at maybe oil prices starting to creep up a little bit. Uh, you've got the grains doing fantastically. So, yes, I do like this. I don't know if you're still in it, but um, VLO at, um, let me just get rid of this. Yeah, so the daily, I've got this as a leg E. could even be an alternate count, E slash B. I'm going to make it an alternate count because I don't want to rule out going higher. And one of the reasons is E slash B. Uh, one of the reasons is crude oil itself is trading at 78.24 a barrel up a dollar 17 and uh it's broken the rectangle resistance with the chapman wave roman candle that uh, this is the first time i've ever seen this where a roman candle was working its magic in terms of containment between 76 87 because remember two out of three closes above the high within two to three sessions is really positive uh, trading for a shorter time period, halfway into the wick of this candle of the 5th of May, and that would be trading in the under 68, would say, whoops, you're going to visit the low that was made of this candle in the 63.80, what is this, 63, yeah, 82 level. <clears throat> uh, and yet, look what happened. It just stayed in this range for one 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And today, leg D on the 12th week, that's about three months, has gone sideways within that range. And now it's the first time it's above that high. So that's just saying to me that crude oil has now the larger rectangle. I'm going to keep this just for the moment. And I'm just going to extend this one as if it was like a, a head and shoulders type pattern. Just extend it out, and there it is. And that just says head on the left side. Oh, sorry, shoulders on the left side back in uh, November or so of uh, December, the week of the 9th at 70.98. Rallies and comes back down, makes a low of 64.54, the week of the 24th of March. Retests it at 63.82, goes to a lower low. And now what you've got is the right shoulder. So that's the head, like a double-headed monster. Now you've got the right shoulder. So this says the neckline is in the 84s. And if we start to trade at 84.30 at any time in August, that's going to be really impressive action. The weekly chart is uh, – sorry, the monthly chart is very negative, but the 9 is starting to improve a little bit, or even though it's S, meaning the 9 is under the 14. I'm watching this closely, and remember, as everyone, there were headlines saying, is, is it over with oil? Is that it? I was saying, ah, ah, I think that oil is acting much better now. The sideways consolidation that I spoke about, oh, going all the way back to May, has unfolded. And now we're breaking to the upside. The nine period moving average is green, being green for about three weeks, uh, two and a half weeks. It's over the 200 period moving average, which is tested on Friday. So crude oil could be in play. So yes. So there are a couple of stocks. I, I, in fact, today I was about to go along USO. And it looked to me like it would gap up in leg D. I, I just couldn't do that for subscribers in a gap up leg D unless I had an ex a trading plan as if it was a screamer. I would have said buy the opening, in this case 69.61, and uh, if it goes to a certain level, take a tad off and raise your stop to break even and just treat it as a trade. Uh, I didn't really want to do that because the weekly chart <clears throat> in the US or United States Oil Fund LP which is different to the a little bit different to the crude oil chart says that it's got a bit of work to go to break above the 14 the 14th of April high of 72.65. It's at 70.21. It's very it's just a hop skip and a jump away. So I'm watching this very closely. Uh, and that that uh, crude oil. Let me just see jets. This is jets is the U.S. Yeah, there it is. The jets airline, U.S. Global Jets. Wow, the costs involved now. I don't know what ticket prices are going to be like in about six months or so in the airlines because they are now paying big bucks for their personnel. And not only that, <clears throat> if crude oil starts to climb, which it hadn't been, it had been kind of neutral for a while. We'll see what happens. All right, so Jess is pulling back a little bit with a dreaded H pattern at 21.63 for closes under 21. 24 is the low on the 14th. If it closes under 20.98 for two sessions over a period of three or four days, I don't care. But if a trade is, trades under that, I think that Jess will be pulling back uh, and it goes back into the inside track repellent zone, which hopefully will someday become a propellant zone in the monthly chart. And it is a peak D already in the weekly chart. So we've got, we're looking at a very mixed market at this particular point. I wanted to show you something interesting. Look at Toll Brothers. Toll Brothers is uh, down to 17 cents at 78.55. What a spectacular move. Toll Brothers makes an all-time high last week, a little double top in the 83 area. Weekly chart is a leg D. I must make sure that it's not uh, 83.67, 83.72. So if there is no new high, all-time high, that is, an all-time high in the housing department, I mean, come on, what an interesting market this has been. There's the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, all-time high as well, three days ago, now digesting those gains. So are these shorts, well, the technicals are still so strong, it could possibly be, but I'd be... I'd be careful if you didn't get the exact high of Toll Brothers or Lennar, uh, it's going to be kind of tough because you've you got to have risk involved. But I would just say that the high that was made 
say in Lana, Lana Corporation, on a very short-term basis on the housing area, 133.24 was a high on the 14th, trading at 127.12. I mean, it's, not a, it's just barely pullback. But if you had to short it, I wouldn't give it much room. Certainly, if it goes over the candle of, of Thursday, which had a high of 131.95, I'd be real careful. Oh, I knew what I wanted to do. So natural gas, good question. Natural gas right now. <clears throat> Trading. Uh, it's, you know, natural gas is stuck. Something's going on. But I would not be surprised if in the next six weeks, gas will be the first sign of natural gas. We really must have pushed it the upside. So I'm watching it. But right now, it's just kind of stuck. It's kind of neutral. I'll be back. That was the point of the day. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Oh, bro, so the DBA Cultural Fund, DBA Long Since 45, is trading at, uh, sorry, it's from 13s. It's trading at 22.33 right now. Look at this beautiful cup formation. And you remember... Some of you who do, I know there are a lot of people now out there that do the, use some of the Chapman Wave techniques. So a lot of people have gone through all my different courses, etc. And I've been making a big deal for at least the last, it's more than a year, I think it's about 18 months now, to say whenever you see a potential uh, alternate count, 
consider that if you get a G slash C or anything slash C, that there's a really good chance it's going to go to that D, especially if the technicals are strong. Look at this big move up today. It's up 1.41%, up 31 cents at 22.32. That's a breakout in the um, in the daily chart, leg D. I say breakout, even though it's a D, D's where other things can happen, leg E in the weekly, and a leg C in the monthly. So this is the reason why I'm saying there's a chance that the Fed is looking at stuff that maybe we aren't looking at. I don't know what they'll do with it, but this information, look at this. You've got uh, the grains, look at this wheat. Look how strong wheat has been. Look at that huge move, leg C, going to test the left side high in the beautiful cup formation. Look at this, I spoke about it last week. Uh, soybean holding so well, walking the nine period exponential moving average. Look at corn. Corn starts a leg B today above the 200 period moving average. Look at sugar. Sugar, a leg D doji candle right here. So that's the reason why I think the Fed might might be kind of a little bit more stricter in their own rules for a change than usual. We'll see what happens. Meantime, Dow's up 178. This, all of this, the nines, nine fourteens are very strong still in the daily chart, where we start to see weakness in some of the key indices, and that to me is a clue to say, yeah, we've got a bit of digestive period going on right now. Um, uh, stay tuned, got a great programming coming up, and uh, check out my opening call, my date, and uh,